Welcome back. Richard Ortiz here with the Fighter's Voice. Voiceography at its finest. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And so do you here at 1680 AM, the Fighter's Voice. Voiceography at its finest. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And so does our guest here, Mr. Pete Lopes. Pete, I'm going to talk to you about this. This next part of the segment is called In the News. So let's talk about March 28th. Markle's Madman Hernandez on national TV, Fox Sports 1, doing it all over again. Doing it all over again. The man doesn't duck anybody. The no. man doesn't take easy fights. No. The man gets in there, he gets gritty, he takes his own shots and gives back his own shots. Talk to us about the Madman. Um, if, if you're a boxing fan and you don't enjoy what Madman does, then I have to question if you are a boxing fan or not. I can Mark. tell you this kid has never turned down. When the matchmakers call... He goes, sign a contract. He doesn't ask about who it is, who it isn't. Because here's what Mark understands. To get to the top, there's no shortcut. Yeah. There's no hookup. Yeah. There's no side hookup. There's no, oh, I got a guy inside. It's not true. It doesn't exist. And for all the fighters who think that, or their parents or their managers think that, I'm here to tell you, I've, I've been in a room with the people on the highest level. In all the top companies, and they don't get down like that. No. You have to earn your spot. You have to earn your spot. And Marky understands. It's dangerous, man. And and it's like that. It's the fight game. And he's made a decision to dedicate this portion of his life to that. So he's not in a position to turn down anything. He wants it all. So he he has to go in with that mentality. There's no apprehension. Everything is moving forward. He's fighting a tough guy, uh, Kyron Davis. He's 11 yeah. and one. Yeah. He's coming down from middleweight. And part of the PBC franchise is they made a commitment to the viewer. Mm -hmm. There are no mismatches to be shown on TV. Oh, no, no. Keep that's those, that's uh, part of the contract. Yes. That's part of the contract. So when you hear people say, man, I don't know if I like PBC. How could you not? Mm -hmm. There's no mismatches. You know, in the old days, you could turn on TV, you see a guy 3-12 and 12 against 6-0. and 0. Yeah. Duh, we know who's going to win. Right, right. But at PBC, it could be anybody. Yeah. And it's really like that. It's doggy dog. His last three fights, well, this will be his third one. I mean, they, his fighters were there to win. They, yeah. they didn't. You try telling them, hey, you're there as an opponent. No, they were there to win. They were there to take Mar uh, Marquis' head off. And it brought out the best in him. And I like the way he adapted. I like the whole team. I like the whole concept. I think he's, he's in a great wave right now. Oh, no doubt. I mean, when we fought TMT, we fought Thomas Hill. We were B-side, if you want to call it B-side. Yeah. We weren't supposed to win that fight on paper. And you even have people, and it's funny, we talk about fans and fanatics. Right. They see what they want to see. Yeah. So they saw his corner, Eddie Mustafa, Dewey Cooper, TMT. They, they swore that that fight was close. The judges, mm -hmm. they took a point for a low blow. It didn't matter. We could have gave him two rounds. It was unanimous. Marky won out of eight rounds. He won six on the yeah. scorecards. Yeah. And people didn't even acknowledge And that. that was after a long layoff. Right. He had eye surgery because mm -hmm. people didn't know. Mm -hmm. Marky, if you had a chance to beat Marky, you should have did it before the eye surgery because he really couldn't see. He was blind. When the lights were gone, mm -hmm. he would fight with one eye. Mm -hmm. But now he had corrective surgery and he could see everything. He sees better than I do. Well, you know, I, I can see a bright future ahead of him. Also locally, you know, as we call this segment in the news, we had trainer uh, Ruben Guerrero, and the father of former IBF featherweight and IBF junior lightweight world champion Robert the Ghost Guerrero. He was in Fresno this week yeah. at Main Events Gym with his fighter, uh, Oscar Al Guerrero Escadon. I hope I said it right. Yeah, I think you did. Oscar, Oscar Guerrero. Guerrero. Escadon. Escadon. I did say it right. right. I said it right, brother. Come on. Good, man. And he'll be fighting Gary Russell for the WBC <sighs> featherweight title. So that's going to be a tough fight. This guy is athletic. He gave our fighters some rounds, came down to Fresno, worked out with uh, Isidro Ochoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, young Isidro was holding his own, man. And, yeah. um, you know, we're doing big, uh, good things here. And I remember you spoke to me about e Isidro Ochoa. Um, what's your take on his young career? Um, Isidro has always been talented. Let, let me say that. I mean, he's been on a, a national, international level since he was probably about 12 or 13. And matter of fact, his first trainer was Madman's dad, Joey. That was his oh, first okay. trainer. Yeah, but you know, kids, they, they go here, yeah, they go there. Right. And, and it's all good. It's still love. But Adults go here. Yeah, there. we're all yeah. over the place. So how would kids not be? The right. thing that Isidro and all the other young guys have to watch out for Make sure you stay on your grind. Make sure yeah. you're on your diet. Make sure mm. you're on your business. Mm. Make sure you're on your training. Don't get caught up in in the bigness of the franchise or right. the bright lights. Because as I said, 
it's still there's no shortcut right you you can only get as i say protected for so long right eventually they're gonna throw you in the pit mm -hmm. and some companies kind of they, they they baby you a little earlier than some others huh. and so eventually <laughs> they're gonna put you in a swimming pool yeah. they're gonna chop them floaties off yeah and you gotta swim so yeah. i think with any young fighter i tell them man do that spar world champion type guy yeah stay around guys like robert guerrero stay like guys around like um mayweather and the goosens and and arams so you can learn your craft and be ready because your time's gonna come and if you really want to make the big dollars and you really want to be on a high level you have to be ready for that you know what i i agree with you 100 percent and, and this next talk I'm going to talk about, man, it may be old news, but it continues to be new news every, every week. I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm not going to talk about it, but every week it comes up. Now, do you think, now hear me out, if Floyd Mayweather fights Conor McGregor, that he will hurt the sport of boxing? Because Price fighter Canelo Alvarez was in the news saying it's a joke for boxing if this happens. What do you think, Coach? I agree with Canelo. I think it's, I think it's nonsense, and I honestly don't think it's going to happen. I don't. I mean... I told you in the gym, it was a guy arguing with me about yeah. it. Well, Floyd would get beat. Da, da. I said, listen. I spun it on him. I said, just take that out of it. How good would Floyd do in a wrestling match with Colin McGregor? He was like, that'd be easy. I go, exactly. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't it be the same in boxing? So would you want to go watch Michael Jordan take cuts in a batting cage for an hour? <laughs> or would you rather watch him play basketball? We're going to watch the man play basketball. So what the hell do I want to watch those two guys well, McGregor slam into him in the ring, him hold him and try to punch him off. McGregor's probably going to weigh 180 pounds the night of the fight if it happens. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what's what's the point? And they're, and they're both great guys. You know what I'd rather see? Yeah. I want both of them to make an action movie and have like a really cool producer like Robert Rodriguez who does all those movies. Oh, sort of like The Expendables. Yeah, like do a yeah. cool movie like yeah. that. And they can all make hella money. We can all go watch it and then be like kind of like the Danny Glover, uh, Mel Gibson type <laughs> thing. You know, they always want to put a black guy and a white guy together. Put them together, make yeah. some action movies, and we all get entertained. And, and eat some popcorn and have a good time. I'd and, rather see that. And let them ad lib the whole thing. No script. Just let <laughs> Exactly. Them just let them go sick. The whole movie. That would be more entertaining <laughs> than them fighting. And they make probably way more money. Yep. Real quick, because we're going to take a commercial break. What do you think about Carnelo, and not about the fight, Carnelo and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. shaking, agreeing to we bet our purse against one another? Is that a foolish thing to do, or is that just too much confidence? Man, I, I think that's awesome if it's real. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I think that's a good publicity stunt, but whatever. It's going to be a tight fight. You know what? I think you said it right there, publicity stunt. Just like we're going to stand out right now. We're going to take a commercial break, and we're going to come back with Coach P. Lopes in the yep, house yep. at 1680 AM. The answer with the Fighters Boys.